welcome parishioners and visitors to St. Wenceslaus Church on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Larry Kawa. Ruth Gappa and I are your lectors for this liturgy. This morning we have a representative from Catechesis of the Good Shepherd who will make a short announcement. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Liz Molly, and I'm one of the catechists here at St. Wenceslas for our program Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, sometimes known as CGS. I'm here to give you a very small window into this amazing program for our young children, ages three to six. It's deeply rooted in the Bible, a beautiful liturgy of our Catholic Church, and also provides hands-on religious formation for our children. Um, children gather in a space called the atrium, which is a room especially prepared for them. It contains simple yet beautiful materials that they use. And what do I mean by materials? If you think about how an adult would read the Bible, they would typically read a Bible passage, um, maybe find, read it slowly again and again. And you may think deeply about the words and ponder how God is speaking through the, through the Bible. A child who's too young to read has another way. In the atrium, your child or grandchild can ponder biblical passages or prayers from the Mass by taking the materials that are specifically made for them. Um, for example, placing a wooden figure of the sheep in a sheepfold for a good shepherd, or setting sculpted apostles around the table for the Last Supper, or preparing a small altar similar to up here with the furnishings used to the Eucharistic celebration. If you're curious, check out the parish website under the Faith Formation tab, click on CGS. Also keep your eyes peeled for the bulletin, future announcements and volunteer opportunities for adults in our atrium. And if you think your child or grandchild would like to join us, we do still have spots available in our Sunday morning session. Thank you so much and God bless. Vaslav, our parish festival is returning to St. Wenceslas, Friday, September 23rd. And it is a night for adults featuring live music, food and drinks, fellowship, and more. Sunday, September 25th, is a family fun day with games and activities for kids. For more information, talk to a Vaslav committee member in the Narthex after church. You are invited to join fellow parishioners for Kalachi in the courtyard next weekend after the Saturday evening and the Sunday 8, 10, and noon masses in honor of the feast of our patron, St. Wenceslas. The Catholic daughters will serve up Czech Kalachi, apple cider, and a polka. Be sure to wear some fest, feast day red. All women of the parish are invited to the Catholic Daughters kickoff meeting and potluck this Monday at 7 p.m. in Kane Hall. Catholic Daughters of the Americas is a national organization, much like the Knights of Columbus, that serves our parish and community. Come join us to learn more about our organization. The Knights of Columbus will be serving their delicious pancakes and sausage and eggs in Kane Hall following the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Masses this weekend. All proceeds raised will be benefit the St. Wenceslaus Boy Scouts. The scripture readings for our liturgy are in Breaking Bread, page 213. Coming together as God's family, please stand, welcome one another, and introduce yourself to anyone you do not know. Our priest celebrant is Father Mike, 
Our deacon is Mark Capone. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 444, Blessed Be the Lord, number 444. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself as a ransom for all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you share yourself with us that we might grow in holiness. Lord, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to share your light with the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commandments on your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath that we may display the wheat? We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuge of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this, I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth. I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish, then, that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward, who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I am not strong enough to dig and am ashamed to beg. I know that I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe the master? He replied, one hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then to another the steward said, And you, how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred core of wheat. The steward said to him, Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty. And the master commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourself with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, 
you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the parable, Jesus uses the image of a steward. A steward is one who has responsibility for the goods of their master, but do not own those goods. He has the responsibility of taking care of them, almost kind of like a business manager. And when I think of stewardship, I'm reminded that we're all called to be good stewards. All the gifts that we have, all that we possess, are gift. And as we see it as that, it opens us up, or should open us up, to generosity and sharing what we have, because we know that everything of this world is temporal, and we only have it for a short time. When I think of that stewardship, one of the things that comes to mind for me personally, and of the things that I have or possess, are these two rings that I wear. They are mine, but they really aren't mine. This ring that I wear on my left ring finger, it used to be my dad's wedding ring. When I was ordained a priest 31 years ago, my mom and dad gave me this ring. My dad wasn't wearing it any longer. It didn't fit him any longer. He had found another ring that he wore as his ring finger, his wedding ring band. And he gave me this. It has a cross engraved on the top. They wanted to put a cross there, and in the inside of it is their wedding anniversary or the wedding day and my, my uh, ordination day. And I know one day that this will pass on to someone else, most likely to one of my nephews. This ring, people often ask me, why do you wear a second ring? Do you want to be a bishop? I don't want to be a bishop. <laughs> this is a family ring. This ring was first possessed, owned by my great-grandfather, Jim Eckley. And my youngest great-aunt, who passed away just a few years ago, my great-aunt Pat, she remembers the day that her father received this ring. She was very young at the time. She was the youngest of a big family. And her older sisters had purchased this ring for their father. And he wore it for the rest of his life. When he died, it passed to his oldest son my grandfather, Joe Eckley. When my grandfather died, it passed to his oldest son, my dad, Larry Eckley. And 14 years ago, after my dad died, it passed to me, his oldest son. And one day, it'll go on to my oldest nephew, Joey. I know that this is mine, but I'm really just a steward of this, a caretaker that has it for a while and to pass it on. That is what's true about all the gifts that we have. But to be able to recognize that is not an automatic sort of thing. As human beings, one of those flaws, and especially that flaw of original sin, the concupiscence, even after baptism, that remains, is sometimes that selfishness or self-centeredness. And when we see what we have as mine, it can lead to abuse, as Amos the prophet points out that the concern is not so much about the other, but exploiting the other for my gain. The steward in the gospel is condemned because he sees the master's gifts, the master's treasure, as his own and uses it for his own resources. 
and is condemned for that. He's going to be audited. But his thinking shifts. He takes what he is responsible for, a steward of, and is generous to others. That's what we're invited with the gifts that we have received to do. But it doesn't happen automatically with faith. It is an ongoing process. Over the 31 years of priesthood that I've been blessed with, I've prepared many couples for the sacrament of marriage and preparing a number of couples right now. And one of the things that I've noticed over all the years that's been consistent as young couples are coming to preparation and we're having discussions, and especially as we have discussions about finances, the pronouns that they use are very much mine, my, I. I make this much, my checking account, my money. It's part of that self-centeredness that all of us have. I remember watching two of my nieces when they were very young, two sisters, one was four, the other one was three. Every time the three-year-old picked up a stuffed animal, the four-year-old came over and said, mine, and would take it from her. To the point where the four-year-old had such an armful that she couldn't hold anymore, they kept dropping out, she'd bend over and another one would drop out. But everything was hers. One of the things that I also noticed, and I recognized right away in my first assignment in West Point, when I was talking to older people, older couples, or even those that were widows and widowers, the pronouns they used was we and ours and us. It wasn't a magical thing when I talked to couples. It's not something they just at your wedding day, automatically that thinking changes. But it is by living that that you move from the I and the me and the mind to the we and the our and the us. At baptism, at confirmation, even coming to this Eucharist, it's not automatic that we start thinking of ourselves as stewards of all the gifts that we have. But it is that ongoing process and we're called to enter more deeply into that each time we come to this altar for this we come we don't come individually we come together and at the last supper jesus said as he passed the cup to his disciples as we recall in the narrative in the eucharistic prayer take this all of you and drink from it for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be poured out for you not you individually but he's speaking to his disciples and for the many we come to this altar together we're not individuals, but we have a responsibility to one another. And we need to recognize that the gifts we have are temporal. Jesus said, if we show ourselves to be trustworthy in the small that we've been given, and no matter what our treasure is, whatever our gifts are, they are small compared to the eternal gifts awaiting us. We are to be trustworthy with the small that we've been given so as to be entrusted with the greater. The gospel of Jesus praises the steward. Praises the steward because he recognizes what he has is not his. But what he does with it is he is generous with it. May we recognize all we have is gift and be willing to be generous. May the Eucharist we celebrate this morning advance us in that recognition. To recognize that we are the stewards. May we be those trustworthy stewards the Lord desires of us. And on this Sunday, along with the church throughout the United States, we celebrate Catechetical Sunday. One of the gifts that has been handed on to us is the gift of our faith. And we are called to recognize that gift and that we are stewards of that gift and to pass it on, especially as we pass it on to the young people who are part of our community. And we recognize, especially, the first teachers, and those are the parents. And so for the parents, the foster parents and guardians who are trusted with a special role and responsibility of being the first teachers of their children, 
and the way of faith. It is therefore fitting on this catechetical Sunday that we offer a blessing for them. And I invite all parents, foster parents, and guardians to please stand. For those who are seated, especially if your parents are standing around you, extend your hands towards them as we ask the Lord's blessing upon these parents and foster parents and guardians. God, our Father, let your peace settle within the hearts of these mothers, fathers, foster parents, and guardians. Give them strength and wisdom as they care for their children. Show them how to raise their families with patience and tenderness. Give them strength during the times of difficulty and help them to recognize the little joys that are part of each day. May they grow in wisdom, understanding, and grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I invite you to be seated. One of the things we recognize by our baptism and our call to stewardship is that each and every one of us are called to hand on the faith and the gift that we have been given. By our word and example, we are to be witnesses of that faith. And so I now invite the whole congregation to stand as we ask the Lord's blessing, asking us all to be good catechists. God, our Father, through the sacrament of baptism, you have given us a share with your Son in the ministry as priest, prophet, and king. May our day-to-day -day lives give witness to the love and responsibility to which you have called us. May we all grow in personal faith and knowledge of the truth that you have revealed to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We do have a great faith, one that has been handed on to us by those who have gone before us, one we are responsible to hand on to others. Let us together profess that faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, let us turn to our loving God to present our prayers and needs this day. For Pope Francis and all the leaders of our church, that they may guide us in using our wealth to serve all people in need throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord For leaders at every level of government, that they may be sincere in their work in, co in conquering poverty and homelessness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and all who struggle to make ends meet, that they may be lifted up by the by the Lord, who looks with favor on all those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For catechetics, for catechists, and all who teach the faith to others, that they may know the value of their efforts as they instill and deepen the love of the Lord into each they teach. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may see the face of Christ in our neighbors and respond to them as Jesus himself would do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. We especially remember at this Mass, Viola the Big. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of petitions and for our own personal needs that we remember now in silence. children come before you in faith hear our prayers give answer according to your will we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord Our song at this time is number 625, God of the Hungry, number 625. Travels with a stranger 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, ye Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Wenceslaus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 601, We Are the Light of the World, number 601.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.